Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you guys doing well. We have pretty um, deep topic today. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I guarantee you, someone in our audience today needs to have this message. Not going to go long, no more than 20 minutes. So if you are struggling mentally in the running roofing business or construction business, I want to get your attention and I want to talk about silent killers today. First thing I want to go check comments, make sure you guys can hear me okay. Uh, looks like ET Smile Gaming says hello, hello. So I can hear you guys if at any point you cannot hear me. Uh, just comment below. Give it a like if you like topics like this. But I want to share a story. A couple of years ago, well, not a couple of years ago, I want to say it 2010, 2009, 10. 11 years ago, I was um, working as a subcontractor myself. Uh, I started flooring gig. It was my first business, flooring business, floor installer. And one of the first jobs I was taking, I never worked directly for the contractors. I never been that sub, but you know, early on, I have quite a few GCs that I've been working with. And I remember this experience I want to share with you in this topic. So we're talking today how subcontracting can destroy you i'm talking about your personality i'm talking about your character because i see so many contractors out there wasting their time and we should as a human beings work hard i've been criticized a lot as a person who teaches hard work preaches hard work talk a lot about hard work you can call me workaholic all you want but i know self-destruction that laziness brings and waste of time brings. And let me share the story with you so you understand my context. So 10, 11 years ago, I was subcontractor. So for five years, I've been working with my hands. I was, many of you don't know that part of my life. Uh, I worked for general contractor. He filed bankruptcy. After two years, I have more tools than he did. One of the reasons he filed bankruptcy, he lost his business is exactly this. Mentally, he was not stable. He did not do right things. He was wasting a lot of time. Last year, I've watched this guy, literally seen, the, the, he lost his company while he was not working in his company, while he thought he did. I started my flooring business and I remember working for this guy. He was GC running out of his truck, huge truck, duly dodged like the, you know $50,000 in 2010. It was top on the line, the most expensive truck you can buy. He sells this job, and I've done about five jobs for him. He sells this job to the lady. I think it was like $3,000 job. I, I knew I was getting paid 1000 bucks. Never bothered me how much people make off me. I don't know why so many people have issues in counting someone else's money. The first thing I want to say to you today is stop counting someone else's money. You have your agreement with people. You have your agreement with the owner with um, contractor whatever like this is stay in your lane and i stayed in my lane never bothered me how much he was making but here's what did bother me and this is the topic today i'm installing floors you know i know that this guy making double the money right so he makes two grand i make one thousand bucks that wasn't a problem the problem was that while i was doing the work i guess because he knew that he was making money he has to oversee the job make sure everything goes well so he gets his two grand he's sitting the phones just came about i'm talking about 2009 2008 9 10 so that we started having our phones and start having this addiction and i remember he was literally on his cell phone on uh, on dating apps all day long um if he would strike conversation with me it would be about girls it would be about can I find him a bride from Ukraine or Russia? And of course I could connect him and stuff like that. And I play along, but he was uh, chatting with the girls overseas. Um, and here's what I'm realizing today. What I've seen back then, it's actually a huge trend today, even more. Recently, one of my friend contractor, you know, on a Facebook, every time I go to his stories a couple of months ago, he would publish TikTok videos in his stories on Facebook. And you know how you have a stories and there's like 100 of them? It would be 100 TikTok videos, like as many as he possibly could. And every single one of them was uh, girls dancing. 
something I would, you know, even if you watch it, even if you get exposed to whatever, you don't have to share it. You don't have to post it. You're a contractor. You're what kind of message you're sending to your peers, to your potential homeowners, right? Here's where I'm getting. Contracting is very dangerous business in that sense. And there's two things happening here. Number one is when you subcontract the work, when you get out of labor force, you have this opportunity to work on something else and don't have to work physically, but you still have to work. And a lot of people, for some reason, they fail at working and they become the most hated people in the industry, people who you know, sell the jobs and don't do anything. It's okay to be a middleman, but be a good middleman. And the problem, the real problem here is self-destruction path. I remember I've been stopping by in one of the Mexican restaurants here for lunch and on a regular basis, I would come and I would see contractors at the bar every single time I was there. Like if I would be there three times a week, you know, two, three contractors would spend three, four hours. Like just, they, they knew the bartender's name. They, it was their lifestyle because they could. So here's what's happening. If you're the contractor and you build a business to the point where you go sell the job and you did kind of your part, you don't have employees, you don't have office, someone else doing the work, it's all good. Find Still find, uh, find something for yourself that occupies you. I cannot tell you how many people right now are depressed to the to the point where they they don't want to be in business they don't want to leave anymore they don't want they lost their drive they lost their purpose because they lost not only work ethic along the way but this contracting life if you remove the labor part out of it you you it's a path of destruction. And let me explain why. Here's another part. Is we also live in a society where this dream life, where you don't have to work, you can, you know, run your business from Bahamas, from the computer. And I love it too. D don't get me wrong. I love the technology. I love that we can do, we are so mobile. I could run my business from anywhere. And, but the thing is, even when I didn't have to work, when I had to work only 10 hours for my roofing business, I still always believe that as a working man, I have to put 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And I'll, I'll explain, I'll explain. Um, because every time you have this gap, you have to fill it with something. Like if you're young, you have to contribute to society. You have to do something. Now, I'm, I'm going to, I know it's going to be a lot of hate uh, and a lot of misunderstanding. So let me explain. Here's what's happening. If you're a working man and you can improve something, you can improve your process, you can build a roofing business, but you still have to do something. I'm going to give you four tips how to avoid it because I've seen if we wouldn't have the problem in the industry, I would not be talking about, but I see addictions. Why men start drinking? Why we have porn addiction? Why we have so many family going through divorces? Why we have so many men that losing their businesses in their prime? Why we have so many unmotivated, uh, you know, men and women in the business? Because it's not healthy path just to work less. And I'm going to explain to you, but I, I want to see a few uh, few comments here. So first one, architectural sheet metal 101 says, "Really, I couldn't imagine being completely hands off. We face our jobs, sub out the easier, larger task, and keep smaller, high detail task in house." This way we get to maintain control. I'm gonna explain kind of like in reverse what's happening. What what happened 10 years ago with that contractor, I actually know what happened to him, nothing good. And I see it happen to so many guys. Like you have, you, your, your potential is this high, but you still have to work hard. If you remove yourself from physical labor, and this is what subcontracting opens to you. It's almost like, Dating without getting married. Married. When you marry a girl, woman, you, a relationship is hard. You come home every day. Sometimes, you know, she does not feel good. Sometimes you don't feel good. She's angry with you. You angry with her. Misunderstanding. You have to work it out, right? But you have obligation. You have contract. You have promises. Uh, you're in it together. Now, when you don't have 
spouse, you know, people think that dating and not being married is easier. It's not easier, but this is what subcontracting is. When you don't have employees, you don't have, you know, having employees is hard because you have to provide for them. You have to build a team. It, it requires quite a few things from you. And what subcontracting does, it opens this door where you have no obligations. You can disappear for, you know, you know how many guys, and this, this is like, this goes straight down to my heart and from my heart to you. How many people have called me in the last two years? I remember one guy called me from hotel because he was about to lose his family because, you know, he came home, his wife left him. He was drinking for days. Um, he had alcohol addiction, drug addiction, and he just went to the hotel uh, to drink to himself. And he called me. He's like, Dmitry, you know, here's, a, you know, I just need to talk to someone. And it's real deal because when you're the business owner and you don't have to work, you know, eight to five, you can disappear. You can go to that bar and spend three, four hours drinking during the day. You can go to that app and spend three hours in TikTok or Facebook in the middle of the day or dating app or whatever other crap that you're doing and nobody will find out because accountability goes away. And if you don't have discipline, you will ruin your life. You will ruin your character. It's a self-destruction path. And I've seen it again and again and again. And then you're 15, 60 years old. You didn't build anything. You don't have employees. You don't have business. You still, you know, you're finding work. You're subcontracting to others. Someone is doing it and you're living off that margin and hope it'll never go away. But it's a very sad life because when you don't put work in, you don't get better per se. And that's why I hate it. Like I hate when people say work smarter, not harder. I, bullshit. I mean, this is hard work. Maybe some of you don't think that making live video or YouTube video is hard work. It requires as much discipline to create good live video or good YouTube video as freaking build the roof, to be honest with you. I would rather sometimes doing some other stuff because when you expose yourself to the internet, giving people advice, teaching groups of people, I mean, being a teacher online, it's one of the hardest jobs you can imagine. Like, I, I know you guys will not probably relate or understand, but it's true. I don't have to work. I do believe in passive income, but I never put passive income on a pedestal. And this is what so many guys are doing. They, they want to work class. And I don't believe in working less because I know for myself, maybe you build different, but I know if I only have to do 20 hours a week and I have 30 hours to waste, you know what? I'm going to destroy myself because what options do I have? Watching Netflix? You know, what do you have? Drinking? How are you going to fulfill that gap? Uh, I do have passive income and I don't have to work. I don't have to make this video. I don't have to make a conference. I make enough to retire today. You know, I have 10, 15 K coming to me passively that if I will never work in, it'll never go away. Actually more than that, but you get the idea, but I still wake up every morning to work because I know that's good for me. And when I see people saying like bringing that message, I mean, there's so many people, rich people, like Warren Buffett doesn't have to work and he doesn't work for the money. Like I don't work for the money. It's the best thing you can do when you made it for yourself, pay back, invest in others, because that's what brings truly happiness. I'm going to go to comments really quick and I'm going to start, I'm going to give you four tips what, how to get, uh, how to fix this problem if you're finding yourself on that path. And so many of people in the Roofing Insights community, so many are struggling with this. Sometimes I'll call guys like, hey, I'm going to be in your city next week or like tomorrow or Friday. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm like, how, how, how is it possible that you have no agenda for a day? Because he's a contractor and there's so many contractors, they don't know what they're going to do tomorrow. They have no agenda. They wake up in the morning checking their social media and they go to bed checking out social media addiction after addiction because you you don't have employees and you rely on subs and that created that gap let's uh let's read comments really quick acosta says that's good advice hope all is well um 
advice was build and scale as your body starts to age. Absolutely. Francisco is in the house. Good afternoon. Absolutely. Captain doesn't drive the boat from land. Yes. All right. I'm going to give you a few uh, tips. Number one is stop chasing this passive income dream. So many people think that, you know, working is stupid. Working is the best thing that can happen to you while you're on this earth. I I'm telling you, like, if I'm 70 years old, I'm still hoping I'm going to be working. It could be charity. I could be on island building villages for people who can't afford it. I don't care what it is, but I know the moment I stop working, I'll die faster. As a matter of fact, so many people did. Like my wife's um, grandmother approaching 100 years, like I don't know how old she is, like 90, like super old. She still wakes up every morning and takes care of her freaking alcoholic kids there working in the village. I mean, hard life, hard works, but she's still moving. I guarantee you the moment that woman will stop moving, she, she, she will die. That's what happens. When you retire, when you stop moving, like work, movement is a life. That's what we're supposed to do now. You have to enjoy what you do. And I will talk in a second about it. I don't, but like if you hate your work, please don't do it. Don't do it for the rest of your life. Fine. So like I, I wanted to teach. This is what I wanted to do. I don't feel like working today. I'm absolutely enjoying everything I do. Like we probably, I'm probably gonna put, if I have to guess, like three, four hundred hours into conference in December. Like every single day, I'm doing two, three hours a, a day for the conference in December. I used to do Christian conferences back in the day when I was in my 1820s, and now I'm doing conferences for roofing contractors, and I love it. And I don't feel like it's work. Last two years, I have lost money on conferences. This year, maybe I'll break even, maybe I'll lose money. I don't care. I mean, it's $1 million event, and every single day I'm putting hours towards it because that's what I love doing. And it is work, but it gets me out of bed. It gets my brain moving. It gets me moving forward. It's not easy. Sometimes it's challenging, but you know what? It feels amazing to do something that you love. Now, I see people bragging about how they don't have to work, posting pictures from vacation. Listen, I, I love getaways. I love traveling. I do it all the time. Two days. I can't. After two days, I'm st I start climbing on the walls. I can't have five-day vacation. I mean, I have five kids, so five-day vacation is for the kids. It's not for myself. And I still work. Like I wake up in the morning, go work out, then come back, do something with YouTube, re respond to a whole bunch of comments, not because I'm a workaholic, but because I love doing it. And I appreciate this opportunity. I appreciate this community and I'm working for you now. But the point is, I believe in that. And you have to stop chasing this passive income trap that everybody's talking about. I don't, I believe in passive income, like I said, but I also believe that if you live for that, if you trying to build something that you don't have to work be careful because what's the purpose what's it you know uh, it's it's very interesting topic actually when you ask people how much money do you need they'll they'll give you something like million dollars just because it's a good number and that's the reason why people who won lotteries and nba players go bankrupt after five years because if you give them million dollars million dollars goes really fast how are you going to spend like you know, you're going to upgrade your cars immediately. That's like 200K right there for two cars. Now you're going to upgrade your house. That's another 500K. You have 300K left. What's next? You have to have a plan for passive income or for whatever income that you're trying to do. And, and then what? People who actually got it and enjoy that life without working, they don't end well. And you need to understand that. And you, you know who is the happiest people? You know, have you ever seen teachers when they retire, when they're 70 and 80? I, I would argue that teachers retire and end way better than people who made tons of money, like actors and NBA players, for example. It's because they knew how to save. They, they were hard. They give their heart away to other people. And then when they retire, they're still happy. They know how to enjoy life working for it now. My second tip for you today is create healthy habits. This morning, I listened to an interview of um, Navy SEAL, and um, he was saying the one thing that 
he learned in army they was just like instill his brain like drink 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 they have water um forgot how you call it canisters they drink every day and then every day they have two hour lunch from 11 to one o'clock and he said for years in army that's where he worked out and he said to this day i still work out 11 to one it's a healthy habit for life and he said i never will go dehydrated because i'm always with drinking water so create those healthy habits now whether it's like i work out like crazy when i'm in town guess what when i travel i still gonna find local crossfit gym because i can't imagine waking up in the morning and you know five six and not going to the gym so that's a healthy habit for me what is it going to be for you and think about where you're going to be in five years so when you, if you think about you know working less and uh have this dream life ask yourself where you're going to be in five years because here's why people grow not when we have opportunity we grow if our dreams are growing if your dream is growing you're going to grow with your dream if you can imagine yourself like being let's say billionaire maybe in 10 15 years you actually will become billion but you have to vision it first believe it or not everything i have today i envisioned it 10 years ago and i have a perfect vision where i'm going to be 10 years from now like you have to think years ahead you have to dream big you have to picture put yourself in that position exactly where you want to be what do you want to accomplish who you want to be and then chase it but this life that people are trying to sell like being in hawaii like i can't even imagine it like sitting and doing nothing it gives me like chills like i hate it like because i know if i go to miami i'm not going to be on the beach laying reading books it's just, it's just not me after three days i hate myself i i'm going to go and apply for a job somewhere local that that's what i'm going to do so imagine yourself i mean think about guys like you know elon musk where are they today they don't have to work but they work because they enjoy they, they solve bigger problems that it's some people just wire differently and elon musk is elon musk because his vision is 50 years from now he wants to be on mars and he will get there because he can imagine it he probably had the dream when he was running paypal if you think about it so number three is don't delegate what are you best at that's my best tip for you today so many contractors absolutely ruin themselves by delegating something they're you good at like i remember visited company here in minneapolis and i remember ryan 15 million dollar company and the owner still does payroll he he writes every single check to salespeople, and he told me he said dimitri that's super important to me that those checks are correct correct amount he goes through them it takes i'm pretty sure it takes a lot of time so for me you know i don't let people touch my youtube channel i could delegate a probably can find some but every single video you see on the youtube channel every instagram post every facebook i mean you probably can tell because i cannot spell for my life about grammar mistakes and stuff like that but i do that i'm good at it i don't want to delegate it and it's also my job that's why even when i travel even when i'm on vacation i'm the one publishing my videos and all the comments that you see the answer is it's me who answering don't delegate something that you're really good at and what's going to happen is you're going to be so good at it that you're going to be on the stage you're going to be true expert in that field that people will ask you even let's say you don't want to be in your business or your business runs by itself you can go and we have a lot of sales guru sales experts guys like ben minchaka you know he was good at sales right in his company now he goes and helps others but if he wouldn't do that if he would be outsourcing with, of guys like ben Minchek or rodney webb or trust me guys like rodney webb don't have to work but they do but they do because they did not delegate what they're good at so keep what you're good at by yourself it could be accounting it could be sales it could be production you know if you're number one production guy in your state in this industry you can solve a lot of problems you can be number one expert in production you can help a lot of people and we do need help so whatever you are good at do not delegate it and last one build yourself on your strongest so wherever you wherever that one thing that don't delegate it become an expert to the point where five years from now 
you can write a book about it you can go and do major keynote because here's the thing and this is what contractors are failing they delegate too much this is why the title of this video is and if you like it by the way give it a like it truly helps guys go click the like i want your feedback if you do like this topic think about it when you subcontract everything you have no one it's a dangerous life when you don't have to respond to your wife i like this trend where people you know when wives are asking like do you know what time your husband comes home i don't know do you know what he's doing today i don't know do you know he's working the saturday i don't know like it's actually my life you ask my wife she doesn't know anything like my wife has no idea what's going on in my business i mean she knows i'm working she can stop by here anytime you know like she's not gonna caught me by surprise doing some random stuff like she she knows i'm always working that's one thing my wife knows but many contractors don't have my discipline and as a contractor you do have that freedom to do whatever you think you want to do with your life and it's not always a good thing have that much freedom for the person who don't have discipline can absolutely ruin you just like giving ferrari to 18 years old you know it's not a good idea it will mess up with his brain it will ruin his character for life while we think it's good it's not always good idea to get what we want you have to put like i highly recommend you guys find a mentor if you don't have a discipline because this is adulthood like nobody tells you to wake up in the morning go to work nobody tells you that you cannot have that long like and best of the best by the way they do have this and they accomplish you know amazing results but what i'm worried about is those guys who are doing smaller amounts one or two million treated as a full-time jobs living off those margins don't have employees to worry about don't have high stress and wasting their life away wasting three four five hours daily and not even noticing it or not even ringing a bell and before you know it that creates bad habits that creates bad character it's almost impossible to get out of that circle because if you're going to live like that for 30 years guess what when you're 60 you're still going to be either I mean, you're not going to end well. And I've seen contractors who are in their 60s and 70s, they have nothing to show for it but bad habits. So that's the message today for you guys. I think I'm done. I'm going to uh, read a few comments here, and we're going to wrap it up, guys. Speaking of which, got to get back to it. <laughs> Thanks again, Dmitry. Absolutely. Go get to work, man. So happy I get to see you live via it. How much money you say i i need just enough. 21 set savage a lot i don't know what it means listen to that song uh oh it's a song okay we'll do it. 21 savage a lot love it i just want to make enough to worry about how much that plate of dinner is going to cost me for the rest of my life joe rogan love it joe rogan man he's I mean, think about guys like Joe Rogan. Like, think about what Joe Rogan have done. You know, the guy does not have to work. And, you know, if you think about what he does, three-hour podcast almost every day, it's a, it's a lot of hard work. But when you do something like that, when you become that good and that high, I mean, sold company for $100 million and he still does it. How awesome is that? Love Joe Rogan, everything about it about him i take two days off and i get out of rhythm then it's hard to get back into it i just uh i jumped back into production best move for me so far i'm the best roofer on this feed just saying love it and i believe you i believe you man if you're the best at it stay at it i used to be the best at marketing i never ever outsourced marketing in my company you know i was replying to reviews we're getting a lot of reviews i mean it works if it works it works you don't have to outsource it that's my life makes it hard to plan anything just because you have subs doesn't mean you're not working absolutely and i'm not saying that uh, having there's nothing wrong with having subs but having subs creates that opportunity to to do stupid things with your free time if you're busy man if you're running around the clock if you're putting yourself like honestly like 
put your hand on your heart and say, I swear I don't waste time daily. You don't have a problem. But when you work five hour days and waste the other three or four because you have someone working for you, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you can run 25 crews and still put 12 hour days yourself, you know, still build the business. Make sure you are occupied. Make sure you're busy. Make sure you're working on your business because guess what? Sooner or later, it will show up. Those wasted hours, they always will catch up to you. I promise you that. Right behind the super roofer. <laughs> Some good points here, buddy. Thank you. That's the spirit. We are the beacon of the best choice in the fog of mediocrity. Yes, sir. All right, guys. We're done today. Mike M. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Real quick announcement. Uh, we are doing absolutely amazing award ceremony this year one thing you need to know about it it'll happen on thursday december 9th in orlando florida you don't have to attend conference to come to orlando for uh award ceremony we have 15 nominations in the next few weeks we'll be uh, releasing videos we will recognize the best shingle of the year the best company of the year, sales rep of the year, CEO of the year, startup company of the year. We're going to recognize a lot of people in our community. It's going to be all about you, not about us. Uh, if you want to attend that, the ticket price will be like $50. You can pay it at the door at Mangos. Um, I think Mangos uh, can fit up to 2,000 people. If you have VIP tickets or ultra VIP, you will have second floor. We'll have second floor for VIPs. Uh, drinks, food will be there. We'll be there 8 to 11. I cannot wait for it. Well, it be absolutely amazing event. I mean, we've already been planning for a couple months, and we still have three to go. So it, we're going to have our own Grammy, if you will, of roofing industry, and we want to do it right. We're not biased. We're not sellouts. So you will see it. Oh, um, my videographer want to uh, show it off. Check this out. So this is actually... Uh, the awards. So we have 15 of those made. Look how cool it looks. Like I said, we're going to recognize a lot of people. This is going to be our award ceremony. So thank you guys so much. We, If you have booked your tickets already for the conference, please book with a hotel. Make sure you're staying at Rosen Center where the conference will be. Don't do Airbnbs. Don't do other hotels. Rosen Center is really important to us, but also for you. I know some of you will be drinking and it's just shorter walk. Like you're not like you don't want to miss someone like, you know, like the speakers we have this year. Just absolutely amazing. I cannot even single out one or two of them out. I mean, the best CEOs of the business, the best speakers of the business will be there. All right, guys, we're going to go.